Good morning dolls and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today we're going to make a few accessories for the dress shop. Now I know the dress shop isn't ready for accessories but it's the accessories and the things around the dolls lives that give me inspiration to do the other work. Now I'm making a few mirrors to sit on the counters for the ladies to look at the things that they're trying on like, like hats or bonnets and I'm using clip earring backs to be the mirror stands. Now if you need to adjust the clips if you're using them off of an old earring you may need to adjust them but these are new they came out of a pack. I have a tendency to convert some pierced earrings into clip earrings if they're too big or too heavy so I had a few laying around. So dolls I'm using some of the same mirrors that I used for the video for the vanity accessories. I will leave a link in the description for that video. Also a link to purchase the mirrors but they can be found at any craft store. I put them onto the clip before I began to design or to decorate the little mirror and after I got it stable where it would stand up nice then I went on to decide how I would decorate it. So I opted for some really fine trim to put around the edge of the mirror to give it a finished look. You just want to cover that cut glass part of the mirror. You just want to cover that raw edge. And I just added a little bit of the Loctite glue around that and that'll help harden the lace too because I actually don't want the lace to be soft. After it dries really really good I want to paint it and give it a metallic finish. Now if you're using the Loctite glue definitely allow it to dry completely before you begin to do any further decorating or painting because you don't want it to interact with your paint. So while that's drying I'm going to go ahead and show you how I made a few purses to sell in the dress shop. Now these purses are different from the purses that I made with the binder clips. Now if you haven't seen my binder clip purse video I will leave a link in the description. But these little purses are easy. They're very simple to make. They're just made out of folded pieces of cloth. Now the one thing I did do to the pieces of cloth after I folded them I added a little broken chain to give it the impression that there's a little handle. There's no sewing involved. I just used my fabric tack glue. I put the little chain below one of the folds and squeezed it tight. Now you definitely want to make sure that the chain locks into the glue wherever you fold it so that it doesn't come loose. Now when you're making a little bag that's really simple like this you're definitely going to have to add details to give it some realism. So dolls I have all kinds of little pieces on my craft table from all the other previous projects so I just start picking up scraps that are left on the table to create these little bags. So dolls I'm doing these particular little items just to show that you that you can make miniatures out of absolutely anything. Never be hindered from creating because you feel like you don't have the right materials. All I used to have to create miniatures were a lot of scraps, a little time, and a lot of imagination. Now dolls you know how I do. I have a tendency to make more than one thing when I get on a roll. Now I use this leftover sleeve from when I made the shirts from scraps and I will leave a link in the description for that video as well. But I folded the sleeve up, cut off the bottom, and then folded the bottom up into the other portion to make it look like the bottom of a purse. Now I did put the fabric tack glue in already. I already have the little chain in and just squeezed it all together. Now after I got that part done I looked at that lace that I've been using over and over again it seems like for everything and cut a little clip of that lace one of the little areas where the pattern repeats and now I have another purse. Now dolls you know I'm big on variety so I wanted to make sure any of the ladies who come to the dress shop have lots of options as far as bags, styles, and colors. So I had this lovely piece of green sheer ribbon that I've had for the longest. It actually came off of a package or a gift basket or something I received as a gift. So dolls if you look at the side of that piece of ribbon I folded it over several times because it's a sheer type ribbon. And I didn't do a lot of design into this one. It's literally just a folded up piece of ribbon with a little small piece of that purple lace that I used when I was making the hat box video. Again I cut up another piece of chain and added it in between 
the loops to the folded ribbon. And after I added additional glue, I did squeeze it down really tight after adding the chain to make sure that it stayed fused inside the glue. And I really thought that little purple piece was a nice contrast to the green. Now I did go on to make a couple other purses and I'm not going to just beat a dead horse. And dolls, I'm just kidding. I don't actually beat dead horses or live horses. I don't beat horses at all. I don't actually even know any horses. But I just want you dolls to be encouraged to create with whatever you have. I don't ever want anyone to think that they can't create because they don't have a whole lot of specialized tools or materials. Use what you have around you. And I guess I really want you to see that I'm using just little scraps of leftover pieces of fabric, remnants, and actually using the exact same type of lace, but just laying it on the fabric in different positions and different cutouts and just coming out with something totally different just by the position of the lace and the shape of the folded piece of fabric. Then I added the chain, a little nail art, a couple beads, and there we are, another lovely little bag. Now this last little piece is actually not a purse. I'm actually making a coin purse and just the squeezed up teeny little piece of fabric and I added a piece of metallic trim around the edge and added two beads to the top for the closure. I felt like a couple other accessories would be in order, especially in a dress shop. Now a lot of people make parasols, but I'm just kind of making just some straight up umbrellas. I thought umbrellas would be perfect for the dress shop because when the ladies are looking lovely and dressed very well, rainwater is absolutely disastrous to their overall look. So these umbrellas are strictly for protection from the rain. So the design is a little bit bigger than that of a parasol. So I had a broken off resin flower, which I glued to a piece of a bamboo skewer, the kind that you use for shish kebabs. And I made a couple other umbrellas, but I used paper clips and I actually took the, my pen drill and drilled a small hole into the top of the other skewers so that I could glue the paper clip handles down into the tiny hole. Now I painted the handle and the tip of the umbrella gold and did allow both of them to dry overnight. Now the top of that uh, handle or the skewer is a little bit scrappy, but it's okay because my actual umbrella portion is gonna cover all of that up again because these are umbrellas that are protection from the rain. So if these umbrellas were to open, they would be really big. Now in reality, I only used half of a circle to make the portion that I fold around my actual skewer because I like them to be folded really, really tight. And if I use a complete circle, the diameter is gonna make it too thick and too bulky. I just want them to look nice and neat and tight. Now dolls, these are non-opening umbrellas, so they will never unfold, they will never open, but I want to give the impression that if they were to open, that they would be really big and excellent for a rainy day. Now after I added my glue to the half of the circle, I twisted it really tight around the little bamboo skewer and pinched it at the top, actually covering that rough portion of the bamboo skewer. Now I did add lace to the edge of this just to give it a little interest and to make it look a little cute and to finish the top of the fabric because I really didn't want to hem it. And then I clamped it down with one of my little clothes pins to allow it to dry nice and neat and tight. After it was dry, I added a little piece of tiny ribbon to seal it off to look like one of those strap closures at the top of the umbrella. Now dolls, I did add a little bit more nail art to the umbrella. I added these little circles to the end to look like that little closure that's at the tip or the finishing piece at the bottom of the umbrella. And I just put it around the end and glued it. I just thought that finished it off nice, especially with the little gold on the pointed part of the bottom. Now dolls, I did go on to make a couple additional umbrellas and I also even make one from lace, which would be totally impractical on a rainy day. Dolls, when it comes to your dollhouse, break all the rules you want. Have fun with it. Enjoy the fantasy of having a dollhouse. Definitely take a moment to check out my friend's channel, The Doll Cupboard, where she has lots of fun with her channel because she totally disregards scale. <laughs> now, dolls, is one little fun item that 
It's always something you need in a dress shop or anywhere in a house if you have people with clothes, and that's hangers. Now, there are a lot of different ways to hang, make hangers, but this is my way, dolls. It really works for me, and it's really easy, and it's fun. So I'm using some pretty fine gauge wire, and I'm not really sure the gauge that I used here for the tops of the hook of the hangers. Now, you can use the smaller gauge um, paper clips, or you could even use the hooks that are on Christmas ornaments. They're pretty fine and easy to bend. And the ornament hooks are perfect for twisting up and making the basic wire hangers that are literally wire twisted into the shape of a hanger, but I wanna make soft hangers today. My youngest son is a master electrician and I found out about this wonderful 18 three gauge thermostat wire. It's wonderful for so many things. Now we'll leave a link in the description for this 18 three gauge wire, but it can be found in any home store or anywhere electrical supplies are sold. Now dolls, I did use an existing 12 scale hanger to determine how long I wanted to make my soft hangers. And after I cut the pieces, I found the, the general center of the piece of wire and drilled through all the way through to the other side. Now this is a hand pin drill dolls. So take your time when you're drilling through. I know it looks very aggressive the way I'm working, but after you make the opening, you can screw in your hook. Now I ran out of little pieces of wire and actually ended up using a little eye pin or eye loop for the handle of one of my hangers. And the eye loops are very convenient because they're already bent and already have the right uh, diameter or opening. You just have to pull it open a little bit with, with some pliers or some tiny wire cutters. Now dolls, I did use a little Loctite glue in the hole to make sure that my wire hooks stayed. And then I covered the entire piece of wire with my fabric tack glue and then wrap the entire piece of thermostat wire with the satin ribbon. Now I would advise that you cover the ends or the nubs of the wire first before you wrap the body of it to ensure that the entire hanger is covered. Now I didn't show it distinctly dolls, but I did bend the little wire a little bit to give it that really nice shape. And here I am covering another piece of the wire with the pretty purple lace that I keep using in all the detail and accessory videos. Now dolls, adding the lace to the hangers is slightly different. I add it on both sides. So I secure it down on one side and allow it to catch a little bit and then cover up the second side. Now you can wrap it around if you like. Um, I really don't do mine like that, but I can't say that it wouldn't work. But this is just my way dolls. And after I trim it, I try to seal or encase the complete piece of wire inside the lace. Now you want to make sure that the lace is secure and that both portions of this type of lace meet so they'll seal the wire inside. I do use my little tiny clothes pins to kind of pinch it to make sure it seals because I want it to dry hard and very firm. So while that one was drying, I went on to make another lace hanger. Same business dolls. I added a piece of lace and I kind of ran it along the curve of the top of the lace so that it would lay nice and flat. And I lined up the patterns to the lace so that they would match on both sides. Now dolls, keep in mind, I'm an over gluer, but just make sure you add an ample amount so that you can seal the wire portion of the hanger inside the lace. And now with this one, you see, I kind of butted it up against the finished edge of the lace across the top of the hanger. I did trim off the excess so it wouldn't overhang. I just want you to see how I bumped up the two pieces together at the top of the hanger so it'll look nice and neat and finished. Now when I got to the bottom, I felt like the bottom portion was hanging off too much and it made it look a little bit out of scale. So I decided to trim off that second rung of the lace design to make it look more in proportion to my hanger. And these are the type of things, dolls, that my daddy used to tell me that my eye will tell what's wrong. And if you keep staring at something, you keep looking at it and feeling like it's off, then you're going to have to correct it. You can't leave it that way. And that's going to come from training your eye to look at miniatures, to look at things that are in scale or in proportion. If an in scale dollhouse is what you're trying to create. 
The bottom line is, dolls, that you have to be satisfied with the look of your items and things you make. And if you're not satisfied, continue to work on it until you're happy and proud to display what you've created. But I will advise you to save your fails because they'll help you to be able to see the progress that you've made with each attempt. Now, I did clamp that purple one down again to make sure it was sealed. And I did add a little bit of nail art to these pieces as well. Sorry, dolls. Here I go again. But I just had to show you this before I got done. Now, I was going to add some trim around the mirror. And then I looked at the little tiny pieces of nail art and realized that they would look adorable around the edges of some of these mirrors. So I added a little bit of my Loctite glue and proceeded to add them one by one in a straight line around the edge of the mirror. And I thought that looked really cute. Hope one of these tips can work out well for you dolls in your dollhouse projects. Now dolls, I haven't forgotten about us celebrating the growth of the channel and me hitting 2,000 subscribers. At this point, I'm about to hit 3,000. So definitely help the channel out by sharing this with your friends and other people you think may be interested in what I do here on this channel. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.